Gentlemen, hello. It is a beautiful Thursday afternoon here in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm on my way to Tzatziki's now to celebrate my grandfather's birthday. Um, but you know, this Thursday, there's a lot more going on than just birthdays. It's the start of a new NFL week. Chance for us here at the Golden Rule to go three and three. We'll touch on rule a little bit later. Um, we got a great matchup tonight ahead of us. Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears versus Carson Wentz and the Washington Commanders. Two great QBs. Not as good as last week's QBs. I mean, that was an electrifying game. Um, I'd be shocked if, if these guys scored scored more than, than what we saw last week uh, between Russell, Let's Ride Wilson, and Matty Ice Ryan. On the topic of Russell, I, gotta, I just got to say, I, I have to say it, I'm shocked that he's a starter in our league. I'm embarrassed that he's a starter in our league. Um, you know, we saw, we saw the press conference from Philly Cheesesteaks naming Jimmy G, you know, the starter moving forward, which, you know, I, I commend him for that. I think it's the right call, but I, I don't understand why it took so long to make that call. Um, Russell Let's Ride Wilson has proven to be a total sham and an absolute failure from day one in a Denver Broncos uniform. Even before that, last year, also on the Philly Cheese Stakes in the playoffs against John Libby McLovin. Um, which, speaking of John Libby McLovin, the trade that he pulled off this week for Travis Kelsey, unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. You know, he got Kelsey for peanuts. I don't think he really lost any value, you know, in, in acquiring the best tight end in the game who got four touchdowns on Monday night. John, I don't know how you do it. I really don't know how you do it. I, I mean, the way that he's pulling off these these types of negotiations week in and week out, I have to assume he's read of the art the art of the deal at least a dozen times. Which you know that would be totally against Libby's mo, but at the same time, that might be the most progressive thing possible to read literature from the opposite side of the political aisle. So if that I mean if that's the case, kudos to you, John. Um, and on Corbin's side, I mean, you talk about you talk about mismanagement. You know, we got we got Chuck out here starting Russ. We got Corbin out here, you know, throwing his team away uh, to try to save it. Ironically, he's just got to be calm. He's got to be calm. That being said, Corbin, if you're looking to trade Dalvin Cook, uh, we just got a new box of paper clips into the office today. I'd be happy to ship them to you. I'll even I'll even ship it to you. You know, Freshwater has an account. Uh, with UPS and I can ship it via UPS next day air and have it in you know at UGA tomorrow I don't know if y'all are running low on paperclip supply if that if that's not enough for you I'm happy to throw in I just ordered some paper as well um, some copy paper I don't think I'd be willing to give you a whole box but uh, I mean I'd, I'd be willing to give you at least a dozen sheets you know maybe two dozen I'd have to pray about that and see if we can spare it but um, I'll give you a couple sheets of that just to just to sweeten the deal for you with the paper clips. I'll still keep those in the deal too. So just let me know if that's something that interests you for Dalvin. Um, I think that's a very fair trade and one that ultimately benefits your team because if you don't have paper, you can't sign contracts. So, I mean, there's that. And then contracts normally have multiple pages in them. Paper clips help keep that organized and neat. So, I mean, I really feel like you'd be getting the the better end of that deal. So just, yeah, like I said, just let me know if you're watching this. Um, if you're not watching and I don't hear from you the next 24 hours, I'll just, I'll shoot you a couple of texts, maybe a couple calls as well until I hear back. So anyways, um, moving on from that, you know, I mentioned Philly cheesesteaks earlier and, you know, we, we did see his press conference and I just want to say that, um, you know, his comments and accusations, um, against the commissioner's office were not taken lightly. We are um, shocked, frankly, that, that uh, we're getting called out uh, for not being a present member of this league. There is nothing that means more to me than this league, except for many things. But, you know, we're very active uh, in the chat. We're active in the, you know, the free agent market. You know, we set our lineups week in and week out. And we're also the second highest scoring team in the league. So, I, you know, I'm really not sure the lack of presence, you know, that I'm being accused of, I'm, I'm just not sure where that's coming from. There's no basis for it. Um, you know, on the other hand, I'm also being accused of controlling other teams. And so am I, am I not involved enough in the league or am I too involved? Chuck, get your story straight and figure it out. 
Uh, and I don't say that to cause any tension. I don't say that to be aggressive because that's not what we're trying to do. Chuck is one of the best acquisitions this league's ever had. And by one of the best, I mean the best. Um, we love we love having Chuck in the league and um, he's a valued and respected member of the league leadership council as well. So just a, just a massive, um, you know, just a, a massive part of, of this league's success. And so we want Chuck to succeed and thrive here for many years to come. You know, that being said, you know, these accusations are just unfounded and I had to expose them, unfortunately, and point that out. Uh, moving on from him, a great week, a really, really great week against Two Minute Warning. You know, Jay and I talked before the game, and by that I mean I might have been talking to myself, but, you know, who's to say? I mean, no one no one really knows. No one really knows. I mean, if, if I identify as multiple people, then, you know, it's 2022, and you just got to go along with that. Um, but Jay and I talked before the game, and, you know, this is the most historic rivalry in the league. You know, more matchups against these two teams. We've met in multiple championship games, um, you know, and – and you know, I'm, I'm about to break the news, actually. I don't know if Jay wanted it to come out this way, but it's coming out. So there you have it. This is Jay's last year in the league. You know, he's been in the league now for you know, for 12 years since it was founded. And this is his final season. So to have won the last regular season matchup against Jay, um, you know, it means the world to us as a franchise. And it gives us a huge boost. And... Also, seeing that we are the second highest scoring team in the league now, that also gives us a huge boost. That's two straight weeks of scoring um, well above 200 points. You know, we got other teams out here winning with, you know, 170s. I think, I think even one team has won in the 160s before. You know, we have yet to score below 185, and we're two and three. It's just the luck of the draw sometimes. You need the stars to align, and, you know, the first three weeks of the season, they just didn't for us. So, but I think the key, the key here, we mentioned it earlier, the key here was that we, we remained patient. We trusted our draft, we trusted our process, um, and we're starting to see these guys really really perform and show out. And we haven't had, it's not like we haven't had injuries either. You know, our RB1 won an IR week one. Um, our, top, our top DB, a critical position in this league with the current scoring, our top DB, Jeremy Chin, also on IR. Baker Mayfield, huge loss, huge loss. But our team is still, you know, we're gaining steam week in and week out. Um, I'm really looking forward to the matchup against myself, uh, Carlos, this week. You know, Carlos is, you know, too busy at school, USC Aiken. Um, and so, you know, he, he just doesn't have time to run his fantasy football chat. You know, he has time to run the league. You know, I don't think he's going to throw the game. But, uh, and, you know, there's always that chance that he makes a mistake because he's just not as invested. Um, you know, I hear he's he's just started dating someone, and um, you know he's he just bought a house. Like there's just there's just a lot going on for Carlos. So I, I hope he can set his lineup. I really do. Um, but there's a chance that he might not. And to see us go three and three would be unbelievable. You know, our goal would have been to be four and two at this point in the season, given our schedule. I mean, we lost the bottom line. That's a that was a big loss. I mean, how we lost to a team that was drafting guys that were still in the NFL when Tim Tebow was playing. Um, or no, they haven't been in the NFL since Tim Tebow was playing. I mean, I'm really surprised that, that Timmy T wasn't on Luke's roster, but, you know, that loss to the bottom line in week one, that one hurt. That was a big one. You know, the fans started to question after we lost to Big City Living, um, who then lost to Rogue Bronca, so I get why they'd question us. But, you know, that, that was a wake-up call. You know, we lost to a windowless team, and we just can't allow that to happen. So... You know, we've really turned it around the last two weeks, and I think we can continue this streak. I have total faith, total confidence in my team, and I expect to see us challenge, you know, for the championship uh, later on this season. I think I think there's no reason why we shouldn't make the playoffs. It'll be tough for sure. It'll be tough, but I think we can do it. Um, so I'm excited. Like I'm excited. Um, what, the last thing I want to cover, I know there's been a longer press conference. The last thing I want to cover, Matt Rule. You know, Monday, Monday was a hard day for us. We went in a hunger strike. It got that bad. We went in a hunger strike at 8.02, we decided. And, you know, we, we were keeping the Panthers, the Carolina Panthers organization updated. You know, David Tepper, um, Scott Fitter, the general manager, we were keeping those guys updated via Twitter every 15 minutes to let them know the status of our hunger strike. I was willing to die. 
me and the rest of this organization, the Golden Rule, we are willing to die. If we starve to death, so be it. The Carolina Panthers needed change. And, you know, they heard they heard our cries for help. The Lord heard our cries for help. And Matt Rule at 11-11, which I have been told growing up was a lucky number or whatever, and you needed to make a wish. Well, that wish finally came true. Matt Rule is out as the Carolina Panthers head coach. So we're, we're grateful that we could get a win his last week as the head coach of the team. And I think that this, you know, his dismissal will only propel us further. We're going to keep the name for now. We don't want to pull a Washington Commanders. Uh, we know that we want to change our name. Or maybe we don't want to change our name. I don't know. We haven't figured that out yet because I think it's it's worth remembering. It's a good, you know, monument to what was so that we remember to never repeat these same mistakes and hire some college idiot who has no NFL experience and give him total control over a team. I mean, why we did that, I don't know. Why we did that and Charlotte FC fired their head coach while we were in a playoff spot, I don't know. You know, someone asked David Tepper. Maybe he can give us some answers on that one. But, you know, that that time is in the past, and we're grateful that that is something that is in our past now. We want to remember that. But when the time comes that we're going to change our name, we want to make sure we do it right. So we're not going to rush it. You know, we're going to be patient with it. Um, and just see how the Lord leads. You know, he has not given me peace over over the new name yet. And so we're just going to stay put with the golden rule. But I appreciate you guys' patience as we think through the name. Um, you know, God bless Matt Rule. I, you know, I wish him all the best at Nebraska, wherever else he goes next. And, um, you know, all I have to say at this point, I guess, is, you know, to my team heading into this week against Carlos, let's ride.